Hello and welcome back to ICS 100. Today we're going to be looking at um, different operating systems and specific features about them and kind of the differences between each of them. So I know a lot of us are probably most familiar with um, Microsoft Windows and as well as OS X, but we're actually going to look at a couple different ones as well. And we will look at some specific features of um, Windows and OS X as well. So let's kind of jump into the slides and we'll kind of get, get going. So as I said, we're going to look at um, a lot of the common operating systems. And as I've already mentioned, you know, Windows is one of the most common ones used. And then we have OS X, which is becoming a lot more popular these days, especially with, you know, the iPhones and your iPads that have been released recently. And then we have Linux, which is another one that, um, you know, it's not as popular, but it is very commonly used. And then we have another one called um, Unix. So we're actually jump in and let's just start looking at Windows right, right away. So Windows, as we're familiar, you know, provided by Microsoft. And this is probably the most widely used one. And there are several different versions of Windows that are out there. And so Windows 7 has about a 53% market share. And Windows 8 is about 17%. Windows XP, even though it's no longer supported, by Microsoft, there is still about 17% of all systems out there on the internet are found to be Windows XP. And then we have other versions of Windows as well, which come to about 4%. If you add these all up, you'll see that, you know, Windows is your most widely used one because it has about 91% of the market share of all systems are Windows-based systems. And so, as well, Windows 7 and earlier kept your standard GUI. They all had the same style GUI. And then Windows 8 actually changed it and they redesigned this GUI for touch screens. So if you kind of look at the differences between Windows 7 and Windows 8, the GUI, they are different. Um, as I said, they did redesign it for touch screens. It takes a little bit to get used to um, that new tile interface and everything. But if you kind of want to go back to your old style with the start bar, you can find apps that you can install that will allow you to do that. So, you know, just do a quick Google search and you can find some. So if you don't like the tile interface, you're not really stuck with it. You can change it, you can get back to your standard Windows, um, you know, start bar if you wish. Um, so let's kind of move forward and let's start looking at um, the next operating system, which is going to be OS X. So let's jump back into the slides. And so OS X, you know, this is provided by Apple and it is becoming a lot more popular these days where you are seeing people walking around, you know, more with the iPhones and um, iPads. And this has kind of helped with um, Apple and Mac OS X getting more popular as well. So obviously with an Apple um, operating system, you need to have an Apple computer. You can see that some people do try to install it on non-Apple um, systems. It is possible, it doesn't work all that great, but you can try it out if you're feeling a little adventurous if you wish. Um, the latest releases, though, if we're looking at the number of systems online, um, Mavericks, which is OS X 10.9, this is only about 3.5% of the market share is OS X um, 10.9. And then we have the latest one, Yosemite, which is OS X 10.10, .10, and this is only about 1% of the market share. So if we add these together, we can actually see that, you know, it's only about 4.5% um, you know, market share that they have of all systems online. So very different than what, um, you know, Microsoft has with Windows where we saw it was over 90%. So Microsoft definitely dominates, but Apple is becoming a lot more popular these days. And, you know, things are changing due to that. So, you know, keep that in mind uh, when you're looking at a system, you know, you maybe go and venture and look at an Apple if you've never used Apple before. Um, so kind of let's jump back in and actually let's look a little bit at the um, Mac um, graphical user interface, also a GUI, so G-U-I graphical user interface. Let's jump back into the slides and look at this one. So, you know, the GUI does differ in Mac OS X from Windows 7, Windows 8. You can see this image here where, you know, it doesn't really have a start bar, doesn't have your, you know, your common um, tile interface that Windows 8 has. It actually has um, what we call a, a dock. And you kind of see this on the right side of the image where this is like your, your start bar in OS X where you can click on these and this will launch your applications. 
or another feature you can use is actually called Launchpad, and you can use this to organize and even launch applications as well. So these are how you know OS X you use OS X to launch applications. Um, you know, so it is a little different. Um, it takes a little bit getting used to, but you know, it's not that bad actually. I I feel that it's a pretty easy uh, interface to get accustomed to. So uh, another operating system um, that you know we can look at is um, called Linux, and this one is different, but it has a lot of similarities with OS X because both of them can run open source software. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. And open source software is kind of a, it's free. You can look at the source code. You can manipulate it. You can change it if you wish to. So that's kind of what open source is, is you can actually look at it and see how it's written and how it's developed. Where other operating systems like Microsoft Windows and OS X are, um, they're not open source. They're closed source. So you can't see how they're developed where Linux is open source. So you can do a lot of different things with Linux than you can with the other operating systems. Though OS X, you can have the ability to run open source software on it, so, um, which is a pretty nice feature. So let's kind of jump into the slides and look a little bit at Linux. So Linux, the mascot is actually a penguin, and the penguin's name is actually Tux. So, you know, little, little trivia for you. And then Linux will run on anything. If you're kind of like thinking, well, what can I run this on? Well, you can run it on a server. You can run it on mainframes, even your personal computer. So Linux, as I you know, said, it does run on anything. You can install it on whatever you want. Even older hardware, it's great to run Linux on it because it can still run it. Um, so that old system you have that you're like, I don't know what to do with it. Well, try out Linux, install Linux on it, you know, use it. So what else is great about Linux is it's free. So you don't have to pay anything. You can go and download it online for free. And as I mentioned, it is open source. And as well, it's extremely customizable. So one of the great things with Linux is you can actually change your GUI, your graphical user interface, where with Windows and OS X, you're kind of stuck into what they provide with you. So we're going to quickly look at, um, as well, in the next slide or two, we're going to look at some um, GUIs that they have, but just to show you, Linux only has about 1.5% of the market share is available. So, as I said, let's move on to some of the GUIs. And so, two of the popular GUIs that we have are actually KDE and GNOME. So, these are kind of your two most popular ones that you have, um, and probably the easiest and most familiar that you can use. Um, and here's some screenshots that you can look at and as well. Some other ones that we have are actually called Cinnamon and Mate. Recently, I've been using Cinnamon quite frequently. Um, you know, the GUIs do differ. Each of them has, you know, their plus and minuses that, um, you know, you've got to play with and see what you like. They're customizable in their own ways. But, you know, that's one of the great things about Linux is that you have this opportunity to, you know, change the GUIs. You can do what you want with it. Um, and the four that I listed, you know, KDE, GNOME, Cinnamon, and Mate are just four of them. There's a lot of other ones out there that you can try and play with, um, you know, but those are just your four most popular. So if you're actually interested in learning a little more about Linux, um, we actually have a class ICS240 where we look at Linux and different operating systems. So keep that in mind, you know, for when you're moving through um, the ICS program, you know, there's a course that, you know, can help um, further your knowledge within Linux. So kind of let's jump back into the slides um, and continue looking at um, just popular distributions within Linux. So there are just a lot of different ones you can get, and these are your popular ones. So Ubuntu is a great one, um, you know, very popular to learn with. You have Mint is another one that's very popular to learn with, Fedora, and as well CentOS. So these are four very popular distributions that, you know, you can go and download and install them for free. So these are just different distributions that you have access to and to get them just go and Google for the uh, the name that you saw up on the list and you'll be able to provide them and you know download them for free and install them. But you're probably thinking well I want to try this out but I don't want to install it on my you know desktop and get rid of you know Windows or OS X. I want to try it but I don't want to replace my operating system. Well, that actually leads us into our next topic, um, you know, virtualization. 
So let's kind of jump into the slides and we'll look at virtualization and this can provide you with the ability to run Linux within you know, Windows or OS X. So let's jump into the slides and look at some virtualization. So, um, well, let's actually go with Unix because I skipped this one. So hold on one second. We're going to step back and go to Unix because of um, I jumped ahead one slide. So Unix is actually developed by Bell Labs and it's closed source, as I mentioned, like Windows. And Unix is um, very popular in the 70s and 80s, but recently, Linux has been replacing it, and just like Linux, you know, it started um, to get very popular because it would run on servers, mainframes, and personal PCs. And also, um, Mac OS X is based off of Unix, so keep that in mind as well. So I kind of jumped ahead of myself and started talking about virtualization. I, I apologize for that. So let's actually now um, jump in and look at virtualization. So if you want to try out Linux or another operating system, you can um, without affecting your system um, in its entirety. So let's jump back into the slides and look at that. So virtualization um, provides you the ability to run multiple operating systems on one system. So that's kind of the great thing about virtualization is you can try out these operating systems on your own machine before anything happens. And so we call a virtual machine um, this is what the operating systems we call um, when they're running. It's a virtual machine. And so keep that in mind because that is a key term that you should be familiar with. And as well, we have two types of virtualization. We have our type one where you don't need any underlying operating system. It just runs on the system itself. And then we have a type two which requires a host operating system. So most of what we're, you know, what I would suggest you to look at is your type two hypervisors. And so, you know, that's what you can use to install Linux within Windows and run it. So let's actually go and look at some examples so you can, you know, try them out and see um, what you can do for virtualization. So let's jump back into the slides and um, we'll finish up virtualization here pretty quickly. So your type one, as I said, this kind of runs on the system itself. So this is what we commonly use with servers today. Uh, within companies because you can go and buy one server, but you can run multiple services on it. So you can run like, you know, one um, virtual machine can be your email server. Another virtual machine could run your web server, but you can do this on one physical machine itself. And software to do this, you have VMware ESXi, which is probably your most popular one. And then you have your um, Citrix Zen server as well. Um, and then type two, is the one that, you know, as home users that we're probably going to be playing with most. And this is common on desktop PCs. And this provides us the ability to try out a new operating system before we actually install it and maybe replace our other operating system. And examples that we have are um, Microsoft Hyper-V and Sun VirtualBox. And I know um, I use VirtualBox and this one is, you know, free, so you can go and download this and try it out for free. Um, you know, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that you can look at and see how to install other operating systems using VirtualBox. So, you know, get on YouTube and you can see examples of how to do it. So, you know, thanks and hopefully, you know, this session was informative and we'll see you next time.